Welcome to the Eden Church, where we endeavor to lift Christ, seek the salvation of the unsaved, foster unity of faith, and promote a more excellent way of living. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this, another privilege that we have been afforded to virtual worship. I'm excited that God has blessed us with another Sunday morning. I'm thankful that he has kept us and that he has not left us. And so please, ladies and gentlemen, as God has not left us, please don't leave him. Stay connected to the ministry. I want to ask you to remain in prayer for all those persons who are sick, shut in, bereaved, and those persons who are waiting to be healed and delivered. Most certainly, I want to give a special thanks to all of you who shared in um, giving me words of inspiration during the time of the grief and the transition of my cousin, 97-year-old Thomas James Stevens. Uh, on, we laid him to rest on Monday after the service on Saturday in Canton, Georgia, at the Georgia National Cemetery. So let me thank you. I ask that you continue to pray for Aunt Hattie and all of the other members of our family during this time. Uh, we also extend our prayers and our condolences uh, to um, the Westlake principal. Um, we extend it to the staff and the faculty. We extend to them the tragic passing of Principal Jamar Robinson and his wife, Anna Marie. We are praying for them and we are in the process of connecting with them as we have been in contact to ensure that uh, everything that we can possibly do as a ministry will be done to assist that family and that school during this time. They have two young sons that we are praying for. It's nothing like the love of a mother and a father and I'm praying that God would uh, position someone in the family in their lives that will care for them just as their mother and their father did. Uh, Principal Robinson was a permanent, a really a good fixture, a powerful fixture of our community. Uh, he was really effective and transformational leader in the community and in the Fulton County school system. Uh, as I stated earlier, I have been in contact with some of the faculty members there and other parts of, of, of the, that particular uh, juncture of school system to make sure that uh, we can, whatever we can do to assist that family and to assist them during this time. If you are part of the Westlake family and you're in need of prayer, you can text 54244. You can text the number um, Enon Prayer and you can receive moments of counseling and prayer during this particular time that we're under. I want to also say prayer and condolences are extended to our nation um, because we lost one of, uh, uh, one of the world's greatest uh, game show hosts, Alex Trebek, uh, for Jeopardy. Most certainly if during the time when he was on, my mother was living, she would always be watching Jeopardy and I would be bored to death but I had to sit there with mother and watch that. He passed away from pancreatic cancer and we're praying for his family. On this past Wednesday, we had an opportunity to celebrate all the veterans, all the veterans. And so let me give a great big thanks again for your service and all of you who are equate the part of the persons who have helped to maintain our freedom. I appreciate you and I thank you so very much. Next week, next week we will provide a uh, information in reference to our virtual holiday services in terms of what we will be doing for the holidays coming up and we will give you detail and outline relative to youth Bible study and pastors Bible study. We have not taken a break during this season because we know in a time like this if we need anything else, we need the word of God to stay on the forefront. And we'll just tell you what we're going to do during our next week broadcast. And so as a reminder, we're still in the middle of the pandemic. So let me admonish and remind you, even though there has not been somewhat of an issuance of a law or a mandate for masks, let me ask you, sweet people, please, ladies and gentlemen, continue to wear your mask, practice social distancing as the numbers are surging. We are praying that we uh, would stay safe so that when all of God's children get together, we will be counted in the number. And so I'm asking you, please, ma'am, please, sir, adhere to the guidelines that have been put in place to ensure for your safety and the safety and the well-being of others as well. As we are approaching Thanksgiving, I want to make sure that everyone under the connection of ministry here 
at the Enon Church and in our community as we participate in what uh, Acts chapter 2 calls the Ujamar process. Want to make sure that all of us are in position and that all of us who are connected to the ministry will make sure that food is on the table. If you're in need of some kind of food to ensure that this holiday season will go in a place where you're not hungry, please text 54244 Enon Support and we can help you in that regard. Also, let me say on November the 22nd, starting at noon, starting at noon on November 22nd, we will have a drive through turkey giveaway while supplies last, while supplies last. Also, again, if you're in need of prayer, if you're in need of food, if you're in need of knowing at the conclusion of this worship service, the plan of salvation for your life, you can text the keyword uh, Enon Salvation or you can text Enon Prayer or you can text Enon Support. You can text those numbers or those keywords to Enon to 54244. Enon Support, Enon Prayer, or Enon Salvation. Also, you can use that number 54244 by texting the keyword Enon MG. Enon MG to give your tithe and offering. Ean and mobile giving. Keep all of those words together. Keyword means don't separate. And so you can text that word to Ean and MG 54244 to pay your tithe and offering. As we move and talk about tithe and offering, let me thank you for your continued support. Most certainly it has been uh, going on nine months now since we've been together, but you have kept us together even though we are apart. You made sure that all of our staff has been taken care of. We have not missed a beat, and it's because of your generosity that we're able to do that. If you would like to send your time to the ministry, 3550 Enon Road in Atlanta, Georgia, 30349, you may do so. Or go to, on to the website. Go down to the giving online portion and pay your tithe and offering that way. I miss you so, so very much, but I can't wait until we get together. Now, let me just reassure you of the fact that it's irrefutable that God somehow, some way, is going to allow us to come back together and worship together in the beauty of holiness. I believe that. I'm trusting him for that, but let's make sure that we're letting God do it in God's time because his time is better than time itself. I love you and let's go into worship.
You are my peace. You are my peace. Peace like no other. Peace like no other. Peace like no other. And it reaches. Reaches to me. In the fullness of the Our Father and our God, we thank you for this privilege that you afforded us to come into your house yet again. God, we ask now that you let us down into the storehouse of your wisdom, that you would blot out our sins, God, and our transgressions. Thank you for the virtual connection. Thank you, God, for the internet. Thank you, God, that yet and still, even though we are not on the premises, we still can praise. So God, we honor you, we give you the thanks that is due your holy and righteous name. I ask, oh God, that you would bless this word. May it be a word that will typify and give strength to your people in these dark and dismal times. Blot out our sins and our transgressions. Let us hear clearly what you would have to say. Touch us individually, but bless us collectively. God, we thank you that we know through the preached gospel and your word that is always alive, moving in our lives. That we know we have everything we need through the total sufficiency of your son, Jesus Christ. Bless now. God, I pray if there's someone who is connected to us, 
who needs salvation, someone who needs a touch from you that you would touch, that you would bring and yield salvation. All of you, God, fall on us now. And if somebody is saved as a result of the preached gospel, we don't want any credit ascribed to our name. We give all honor and glory to your holy and righteous name. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stop and put those hands together and give God the praise that he so richly deserves. I want to see if I can go back down memory lane, down to a point where my mother used to sing a little song. And uh, I think it went something like this. I need the Lord to guide me every day. Fill my soul. I'm the time on. I'm gonna make my goal. I've gotta have Jesus, cause I just can't make it by myself. Lord, I pray, and I pray, I pray, and I pray, Lord, I pray, and I pray, gotta have Jesus, cause I just can't make it by myself. Every day Through the years Come what may I've got to have Jesus Cause I just can't Make it by myself Let's see if we can put that right in order oh, Through the years Through the months Through the weeks the days, through the hours, through the seconds, through the minutes, come what may, I've got to have Jesus, call I just came, make it by myself, oh man. As some would say, I reached back a little too far for some of you when I need Jesus to guide me every day uh, as I travel along this rough and narrow way. Though afflictions fill my soul, I'm determined to make my goal because I've got to have Jesus because I can't make it by myself. And I think that's when God is infused with strength when we become and get to a point and tell him I'm weak but thou art mighty hold me with thy powerful hand I want you to get your Bibles go with me to a collection of writing that's called the New Testament John chapter number 6 verse number 5 all the way to verse number 14 and I'm reading the New International Version of the Hebrew context of the Bible, it may differ from the one you hold, but in conglomeration, it means the same. It'll get us to the same point. And I want to look at this. I have looked at um, this particular parabolic expression, but never from John 6. And uh, I've discovered something very interesting in this particular soliloquy 
that will be beneficial for us. Right there in verse number five, it says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, listen at that, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? And he asked this, only watch this to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. And look at verse 8, and another one of his disciples, another of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, spoke up. Look at verse 9, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far would that go among so many? And Jesus, look at what it says. And Jesus said, have the people to sit down. And I want to tell you, whenever Jesus says sit down, he's getting ready to stand up. <laughs> look at what he said. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. So it was a Passover time, April, somewhat about. And about 5,000 men were there. Watch that. Verse 11, and Jesus then took loaves, gave thanks, and distributed though to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Verse 12 says, and when they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over let nothing be wasted verse 13 so they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten In verse 14 finality of our reading says and after the people saw the sign jesus performed they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is come into the world. The Lord and I want to attack this text for just a few moments. God is more than enough. God is more than enough. He's more than enough. Matter of fact, go ahead and shout that out to yourself. God is more than enough. Ladies and gentlemen, as I think about God being more than enough, I can testify that there have been times in my life when I felt like I was in the wilderness without the sufficiency of what I needed and God supplied my every need. I can testify that there have been times I've been down to nothing, but when I was down to nothing, God was always up to something. He keeps on making a way out of no way. And most certainly, I'm sure you can testify the same, that you can look at the tale and the tapestry of your own life and discover that God keeps on giving us abundance even when we are in a dark, dismal place. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, as I move into this season of Thanksgiving, I wanted to share a word that seems always draw a picture or uh, corral our hearts in the direction of appreciation and causes our mind to think so we can be thankful. Let me begin this message by giving you some of the background information as I move swiftly here of the text because one of the things that is important about this text is that is the feeding of the 5,000 was of such a magnitude that it is recorded in all of the four gospels which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call them the synoptic gospels. And sometimes John is not equated in that presentation because John was not like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John, you'll find him in every episodic presentation. What Jesus is going through, every line and logic, John was always there. And so John became an eyewitness while the other writers were really reporters. Let me just share with you, John could talk from a different perspective. Whenever there's been a crime on the scene, they always look for an eyewitness because sometimes reporters 
information are not really necessarily admissible to the situation. But John, in this line in logic, has seen it from his own vantage and viewpoint, and if you will, it's recorded in all four Gospels. If you follow the text of John, you will see and find that it is a great multitude have been following Jesus, not just today, but for several days. They had been listening to his teaching, his beholding all of the miracles. The Bible says that they had been following him and they were amazed at the miracles that Jesus had brought. And so Jesus performed upon these people who were sick and people who were in a diseased state. And so the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that Jesus was really trying to get away, to find a little isolation, to spend a lot of time because he had spent a lot of time teaching and performing miracles. And I discovered that within the framework of the line and logic of who we are as ministers and teachers and preachers, if we don't spend a little time in isolation away from everybody else, we do ourselves nor the people we serve any good. Let me just say rest is holy. And so I've learned that sometimes you got to take a break to get away from it all, cut off the cell phone. And I believe that if you look at the tale and tapestry of the text that Jesus was in a place where he was trying to isolate but the Bible says that the people followed him into the place where he was and it was said that uh, they followed him so much so that they saw the great crowd and when he saw the need for food and because of the compassion he ministered to their needs and he fed watch this 5,000 men, not including women and children. Now notice that Jesus could have just lifted up his hands and looked out on the crowd and towards heaven and demanded that manna fall from heaven, fed the people, and he would have just went on about his business. He could have spoke to the rocks that were on the ground and commanded the rocks to be turned into bread, but he would have, that would have happened if he would have said that because everything that God has said calls as a result of things to come into motion. He spoke and the world started twirling. Can I get a witness here? He could have just created a loaf of bread in every man's pocket instantaneously just by speaking a word. But Jesus did not do that, any of these things. Instead, he chose to work through others using the meager, the inadequate, the skimpy, the measly resources that were available to him and performed a miracle right before their very eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that the people had been following him. And it's became beginning becoming late in the evening, and he knew that they were hungry. And and anything, let me just tell you, anything you don't want to be bothered with is a hungry church crowd. <laughs> a hungry church crowd. We like to meet, greet, and eat. And so he wanted to make sure that they didn't leave him the same way that he can, they had come. That was hungry. And that's what I love about Jesus when we look at him in any situation. And that is that if you have a true encounter with him, you will never leave him the same way you came. You will never ever leave him the same way you came. Just touch somebody in the house and tell them you will never leave him the same way you came. You can come to Jesus a drunkard and he'll make you a preacher. You can come to Jesus a homonger and he'll make you a missionary. Can I just tell you the truth? You can come to him a drug pusher and leave out of there being a deacon. But you can't do this on your own. You can't come to Jesus and leave the same. You will never ever be the same. And one encounter with Jesus will change your entire life. 
I'm sorry, listen here, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you and remind you, he performed this particular miracle. Like I said, he didn't call bread down from heaven, but instead he decided to use people to assist in making this thing come to pass. Because in order for Jesus to accompany his will here on earth and accomplish his will here on earth, he does it through people, places, and things. God will use people, places, and things to make sure that his mission comes to fruition. Whatever God is doing, uh, he will do it through the enhancement of people, places, and things. God will sometimes cause people that you don't even know to bless you. He will cause you to go to some places sometime that you don't want to go to make a way out of no way. He will allow some things to happen in your life to change the very circumstances of your life. The kingdom, he does it through people. He does it through people. So Jesus turned to others to help deal with this particular miracle and so now the first person that he turns to according to the text is Philip this brother Philip look at what he said he as he looked up to see the crowd he asked Philip you see the crowd Philip let me use my spiritual imagination here where shall we buy enough bread for these people to eat now the Bible said that this is said to test him. For he himself knew all along what he's going to do. Don't ever think that God will put a problem in your hand. God already knows what he's going to do. Sometimes he tests us by inquiring to our mind to project our faith to a place it has never been. Now, if you read the Gospel of Mark, recording to this particular account, or John also, you'll see that it says it was getting late in the evening. And he sends these people, they say, send them away, send them away. And that's the answer that a whole lot of us have a problem with people. Instead of dealing with drunkards, we want to send them away. Instead of dealing with backsliders, we want to send them away. Instead of fulfilling the need that people have and giving over to the needs of the people, we want to send them away. Jesus asked Philip, where can we buy bread enough for these people to eat? Now the reason that Jesus asked the question of Philip is because if you do your research on this particular pericope here, you, Philip was from the area. So he called him because he was familiar with the circumference of the area, a small place. He was from that small place of Bethesda, which was in the area. And if there was anyone who knew where to go get food, it was Philip. So he asked Philip, hey man, listen, you're from this geographical location. Can you just tell me where I need to go so we can get the food for these people? Jesus asked Philip, where can we get enough food? for these people to eat the Bible says that Jesus asked Philip the question to test him look at it it's right there in the book to test him and so it implies that he failed the test can I just tell you you got to be careful of your response to Jesus because you don't want to fail the test now there are two reasons ladies and gentlemen that he failed the test that's two reasons because one was his formalization because he was too familiar with the place. I want you to see that. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm getting ready to ask you to tap somebody and it might be you tapping yourself because I'm going somewhere. He knew that there was no place close for there to go buy food and because of this familiarity and his surrounding, Philip concluded that there was no hope for them to be able to purchase any food and that's many of our problems 
problem today it is that we too many of us miss our blessings because we are too familiar with the arenas and areas of our surrounding some of you are too familiar and if you're too familiar you'll mess up your future based upon your past because you're too familiar when God asks you can this happen you'll be too familiar we are too familiar with the terrain we're too familiar with dealing with the lack we're too familiar with doing without and we're too familiar with the past of what used to be can I just tell you don't when you go to God and when God is traveling with you don't go on what used to be when, when you know God is with you when you know God is taking you to a place that you've never been before tell somebody in the house don't go on what used to be don't on what used to be we can't get too familiar with the way things are because God is forever changing some things he's doing some new things in our life because if we get stuck in at the way things used to be we will never get a chance to see the divine possibilities of God we'll never get a chance to see the divine opportunities because whenever we're stuck at what used to be we're always looking behind us trying to figure out what's coming instead of looking in front of us see what God is doing let me just tell you tell somebody in the house quit being familiar quit being familiar God said I'm going to do a new thing he said I'm about to turn your life around and then you still stuck like Chuck on what used to be tell somebody get rid of your familiarity mm, watch this so, so one of his problems was his familiarities but then the other problem was his calculation somebody said calculation because he said in verse number 7 of Mark gospel account look at, at, at Jesus he eight months wages he says even in John and Mark both account he said there eight months wages is not enough bread would not be enough money to buy bread for all these here people now he was a man that knew how to count well. He knew how to count well. He had a, a way with figures. But what he didn't take into account was that whatever you got something and you put it in the master's hand, it becomes multiplied. Matter of fact, God didn't even do math like we do. He didn't because we said two plus two. Uh, we have a two times five equal ten. But he says two times five equals five thousand. Not including women and children. We said one plus one plus one equals three. He says one plus one plus one equals one. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Watch this. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. If, if you were to give the earth a seed, Watch this. It will produce a harvest. I'm trying to show you something. Watch, watch, watch. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If you give the earth a seed, it's going to produce a harvest. Watch this. You can always count how many seeds in an apple, but you can't never count how many apples are within a seed. I'm going to say that again. You can count how many apples or how many seeds in an apple, but you can't count how many apples are in a seed. Because you can, you can plant watermelon seeds and watermelons will run until they get tired. You can place your tithe and offering into the house in the hands of God and he'll open a window, pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Oh, can I get a witness here? He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have. Tell somebody, he'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough. And unfortunately, nothing has changed. We just have a problem with calculation. He had begun to calculate that there were just too many people. But what he didn't calculate was when you put it in the master's hand. Matter of fact, go ahead and tell somebody, let's just put it in the master's hand. He'll multiply it. I, I ought to have a witness that God will multiply. He'll give you more than you're looking for. He'll open a door with, that no man can shut. And I'm convinced that too many churches, too many people are really caught up in not looking at the magnitude of what God can do. We're looking at the meager in our hands. The next person if you look at the text that we see in the equation is Andrew 
We had something in the ministry here called Operation Andrew. That was when we start talking about friendalism and evangelism because Operation Andrew was when you go out and get the disciples to come in. And our Andrew in verse number eight and nine, the Bible says that one of his disciples, Simon Peter, brother, said to him that there's a lad here that has two fish five by the load but what is that among so many this will not be sufficient enough this will not be enough but I come to tell you when you put it in God's hand he's more than enough watch this Andrew found the solution watch this we will give him a credit he will get a little uh, he will gonna grade Andrew on the curve since this is a test Andrew found the solution to the problem but he could not see how the problem could be solved. Ah, uh, he found the solution. How many times we found the solution? Our solution is in Jesus, but we really won't give it over to him to solve the problem. We keep on fixing on it, kept on fixing on it, kept on fixing on it. Then nothing was happening, but you stop and wait on God and watch God work it out. You see, Andrew was one of those persons who was always finding people. And when he found Jesus, he went and found some other people and said, I found a man. Come over here and see a man who's given sight to the blind. And so when he found this boy in this crowd, he said, Master, I found a boy. And he got two fish, five, watch this. I'm getting ready to show you something here. Barley loaves of bread, but what are they among so many? He failed the test because of his devaluation. <laughs> his devaluation, he devalued what he had. He could not see what, that he had found a solution to the problem. So he, like the rest of the disciples, he failed to see the wealth of what was in his midst and sometimes we cry with two rolls of bread under each arm we don't really thank God for what we have we still keep begging with one hand instead of working with two because we don't see the value in our midst they saw only two fish and some bread so they devalued their worth because they left Christ out of the equation how many times you left Christ out of the equation now remember these are the same men that had seen Jesus. They ain't just start running with Jesus. They've been traveling with Jesus. And the quickest way for any vision to become devalued is that the, 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 the master and the ones who work in the ministry don't see the same see, see the same view. Anytime you want the vision to be validated and become visible, the visionary and the volunteer got to have the same view. So they didn't see what he saw. Remember, these are the same men that had seen him turn water into wine. They drank the wine. It was good. These are the same men that saw Jesus heal the nobleman's son. These are the same men that saw Jesus take a man who had an infirmity for 38 years, tell him, take up your bed and walk. And now they get to this episode of this presentation of the text and they could not see Jesus was able to provide for those whose stomach were growling. And that's where so many of us, my brothers and sisters, we miss God. And you don't ever want to be on the premises and not collect on the promises. When you do that, you miss God. You, you, you have seen God make a way out of nowhere. You've seen God save people in your family that were in this from the streets. You, you have seen God change your people's attitude from being hateful to loving individuals. But the time a little opposition come along, we become dysfunctional and because we become unraveled, we become unglued, we become disenchanted, dis, disconnected, unstitched, uprooted, ununited, unknotted, and we all seen other miracles that he has done in life, but we are, can testify how good God has been, but time we've got to deal with the confrontation of our current culture. We begin to panic and not see that God can make a way out of no way. Can I just tell you that God is more than enough 
That's why so many of us are limited in our resources because we have devalued what we have. You got to know that we serve a God that will bring us out. Look at Psalm 66. Look at verse 12. It says, you let me ride over our heads. You let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and the water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. And the God I serve will bring you out no matter what you go through. I, it can be fire. It can be a flood. But can I tell you, God will bring you out. Reach over and tell somebody in the house or just shout it to yourself. God will bring you out. The God I serve will make you the head and not the tail. He'll make you the lender, not the borrower. He'll bring you out to be more than enough in the stages of your life because my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ask, think, or imagine. It doesn't matter what I'm going through because I serve a God that can handle it. I serve a God that can heal it. I serve a God that can deliver it. I serve a God that can set you free. So even though I may go through some stuff in this season that we're in, I'm not going to act a fool. I'm not going to act crazy. I'm not going to throw up my hands. Because even though I'm going through the fire, it's not going to burn me. Even though I may go through the flood, it's not going to overtake me, overflow me. Because God, the God I serve, he's an able God. I need to ask you a question. Is there anybody watching me that know he's an able God? Is there anybody that know that God is able to do just what he said he would do? There's one more person that was here in this particular biblical exercise said that that was don't want to leave him out because he was the one who was present, prepared and willing to participate because you do know everybody that's present is not really present even though everybody is present, sometimes they're not prepared and then they're not willing to participate, I don't know his name but the Bible calls him a lad I don't know where he comes from, don't know anything about his family, but when I tried to research, and I don't even know his pedigree, his lineage, his bloodline, his ancestry, and I don't even know anything about his history, but there's something I do know about this boy based upon the text, because the text says he has two fish. Uh, first of all, he was impoverished. How do you know that, Pastor? Good question. Glad you asked, because John says that his lunch was composed of something to let me know he was impoverished, because it says he had barley bread, <laughs> which is the cheapest bread you can buy. And as a matter of fact, barley bread was held in contempt for by those who were poor, those who were the very fact brought barley bread with mint. He was a young man of poor mega means which means that he came from a poor family. He didn't have much, but the Lord had been good to him. Not only was he poor, but he was also, according to the text, because they couldn't get to him until there's a need that arise, he was insignificant. Uh-huh, all of his people, of the crowd, this boy was the most insignificant. Watch the text, because he was poor, insignificant, but yet he did something to set apart himself apart from everybody else that was in the crowd. He gave his lunch to Jesus. Gave his lunch to the Lord. Now this lunch that he had was insufficient as the boy was insignificant. But the point is that this insignificant, insufficient, see, became sufficient and significant when you placed it in the master's hand. And as long as the lunch stayed in the boy's hand, it was insignificant. But the moment he placed it in the hands of Jesus Christ, it became sufficient. Oh, that's some major stuff going on in that text because you might be impoverished 
Others might think you're insignificant and insufficient, but you might have some problems, that you might have some tales and some issues. You might have some troubles, but you, when you place all of those things in the master's hand, you become sufficient. Paul said, who is sufficient to handle all of these things? It was the same Paul that came back later and said, God's grace is sufficient. You may not be noticed by others, but really doesn't matter how long you've been in the back room because God can bring you to the front room. And believe me when I tell you that God knows all about it. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your age. He knows your down risings and your up risings too. He knows your sickness. He knows every strand of hairs on your head. God knows who you are. And there's one important thing that I need you to know here that is throughout the Bible biblical history God has always used and done miracles with things that seem insufficient what is more insufficient than dust matter of fact you never seen a sign that says dust for sale but guess what what's more insufficient than dust you really can't do nothing with dust but dust it up but look at what God did with dust he formed man from the dust breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and we became a living soul what's more insufficient than a jawbone of a donkey but it came sufficient in God's hand when he transferred it to Samson <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying a slingshot by itself is insufficient but when God placed it in David's hand faith got above the rock grace got under the rock mercy got in the rock and he pulled it back and the rock did his thing because Jesus is a rock in a weary land can I explain something when the widow woman had empty jars it was insufficient but when God told the man of God to tell her go borrow jars she filled them up so I'm here to tell you that God takes what's insufficient baptize it in a major miracle when then he do it can I get a witness you might be looking a little lightness you might be looking a little tired but can I tell you one look at Jesus will make you great again can I get a witness you might be a little mad but God will make you meek and humble you might be looking at your disposition but God is looking at your reposition do you hear what I'm saying so the record is that the first thing that Jesus did when he got the bread from the little boy he lifted it up and said God I want to thank you daddy for working miracles God I want to thank you daddy for doing what it is you're getting ready to do so somebody gotta have an advance advance praise go on and thank him for what he's getting ready to do and as he thanked him for what he was about to do he broke fish 
and fish came out of fish. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I heard in verse 10, do you hear me? That Jesus made the people sit down in the grass and I heard, hey, I heard that Jesus took the little boy as he prayed the lunch over and now notice the Bible said he had two fish don't miss that because one writer said two fish this writer says two fish fish how many fish you have and fishes is how many kind of fish do you hear what I'm saying fish is how many fish is is the kind of fish and understand that the Lord is so smart he know everybody don't like tilapia know everybody don't like like catfish so he knew some people like some people like mullet some people like white some people like a red snapper do you hear what I'm saying some people love ocean perch so the Bible says that he led the lad had two fish two fishes and five loaves of bread so please understand that nothing can live out of his habitation do you hear me nothing can live out of his habitation can I get a witness nothing can live out of his habitation so they placed the fishes in the master's hand and who is the, the living water do you hear me he's the living water then they had the overflow do you hear me and guess what allow me to prove it because the Bible said as the master received it he lifted it up prayed over it and it multiplied do you hear me because when he gave it to Jesus the disciples gave it to the multitude and I heard I said I heard I heard that he fed 5,000 not including women and children I heard that when Jesus got through they took up 12 baskets of food because he told them to gather up the fragments so that nothing will be lost 12 baskets full of fragments do you hear me 12 baskets of fragments two fish five loaves two and five equals seven twelve God's government do you hear what I'm saying that means that every disciple took home a doggy bag yes good God from Zion I came to tell you he's more than enough hey! yes he is he's more than enough reach over and tell somebody whatever you need hey God got it Because he's just that kind of God While you're trying to figure it out God has already worked it out While you're trying to make a way Or to have somebody that will testify He's already made a way 
Why you trying to look for my faults? He's look beyond my faults and meet my need. Why you standing around with your head bowed down? He's telling you, lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and then the King of Glory shall come in. Yay! Who is, who is, who is this King of Glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, he is an all-sufficient God, he's a way maker. He supplies all of our needs. And he keeps on making a way. Do you know him? Has he been there for you? I want you to know today God is more than enough. Tell somebody he'll be right there. I know that Christ is sufficient because of his background. He's got a background. Nature is his workshop. The sky is his resume. The universe is his calling card. And he's an awesome God. And he knows what you need. Don't worry about your situation. God is in full control. Don't worry about your finances. Because God has all the money in the world. But you got to know the secret and the secret is that you've got to put it in the master's hand when you put it in the master's hand he'll change things because every time I put anything in his hand he'll turn right around and, and bless it because he's a way maker he's a hard fixer a mind regulator do you know him? Do you know him? God will always be more than enough. God bless you today.
Let's take it out. Let's go. It's on the way. 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 Feel that again. Do it one more time. Say already here. Already here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say already here. Already here. Now say it like you're sanctified. Grab it one time. Say already here. Already worship's experience has been a blessing to you I'm praying that uh, you will know that God is our sufficiency our sufficient Savior will take care of us I'm praying that you will know that God will always be more than enough even in a dark dismal season in a dark place God will be more than enough. Say that to yourself. God is more than enough. Amen. He's more than enough. I want to pray with you because the word benediction comes from the Greek word benedicti, which means blessings. So I want to cover you in a word of prayer. As we are not connected virtually, I pray that we will be connected in the spirit realm yet and still let's pray father we thank you for what we've experienced together while they were there and i am here yet you are with us both at the same time god i honor you i give you thanks i pray that you would cover us that you will continue to allow your face to shine upon us that you will give us peace peace that surpasses all understanding May you keep our hearts and minds stayed on you. God, I pray now that you would bless us. Go with us, lead, guide, direct, and protect us like only you can. God, we honor you. We lift, we magnify, we extol, we exalt your holy and righteous name. God, we thank you now. We declare that we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field, blessed when we come and when we go. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. Until the next time, go in peace. I love you. See you soon.